on. Um, it is my great pleasure this evening to uh, introduce uh, our guest, uh, Amr Adli. I'll uh, present Amr in, in a second. Uh, just uh, to, to say uh, initially that uh, this is part of the uh, SOAS Middle East Institute uh, Tuesday lecture series, and uh, uh, that uh, I am my, myself uh, a professor at SOAS in the Department of Development Studies, uh, which actually is the field in which uh, the, the book that we are going to, to, to discuss this evening uh, is very much rooted because our guest uh, is Amr Adli and Amr is uh, assistant professor. I was asking him just uh, before we start about the oddity of him being assistant professor with such a publication record, which is uh, excellent. Uh, and he explained to me that uh, the AUC has not been hiring any tenure track uh, positions and so granting people fixed term positions, which is also his case. We are familiar with this kind of precarization, I should say, here in the UK. But still, it is uh, quite uh, strange to, to see someone with the, 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 this publication record uh, uh, not tenured. So he is in, based in the Department of Political Science at the American University in Cairo. He's speaking from Cairo, actually. Uh, he worked as a researcher at the uh, European University Institute. He also was a non-resident scholar at the Carnegie, uh, Carnegie Middle East Center, uh, where he focused on the, the kind of research that he will be presenting today. He also had a long uh, postdoctoral fellowship at Stanford University, where he worked there with the Center of Democracy, Development, and the Rule of Law. And, uh, and uh, as I was saying, he's the author of, uh, of well, a lot of uh, interesting publications, including two, uh, two books. Uh, one which came out uh, in 2012, uh, which is uh, on the, the, uh, the I mean, a comparison, a comparative uh, uh, of, of the development of, uh, of uh, Turkey and Egypt, it's called State Reform and Development in the Middle East, the cases of Turkey and Egypt. Um, and the second, his uh, most recent book of, of uh, 2020, uh, published by Stanford University Press, uh, which we are going, which he is going to, to present to us this evening and which we're going to, to discuss, is a cleft capitalism, the social origins of uh, failed market making uh, in, in Egypt. It's a, it's a quite a substantial, thick book, uh, very interesting, uh, I should say, and uh, I, I wouldn't hesitate to, to read the book as a major contribution, and not only to, uh, the, I mean, the, the, the topic itself of, uh, of the Egyptian, Egyptian development, Egypt's development and, and, the, and the economy, or even the, the regional setting in which this happened, which is the, the Middle East and, uh, and North Africa. But beyond that, this is really, an, I think, a very important contribution to development studies, to the developmental, uh, to, discussion um, and uh, a book uh, with a original thesis or some, a thesis that is developed through the, the Egyptian case in a very uh, interesting and uh, very well researched uh, uh, manner. So a very dense book. Uh, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, we will see that the focus of the book is the, the, the what he what Amr Adli calls the, the, the missing middle, uh, referring to the, the atrophy of, uh, of small and medium enterprises in a country like Egypt, and hence the, 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 the notion of cleft capitalism between very small uh, uh, enterprises and, uh, uh, and large uh, uh, scale uh, capitalism. Uh, it's, uh, it's not surprising because his previous study was about Turkey uh, and Egypt, and in the comparison, I think it is one of the most uh, 
salient issues is the, the difference in size of, between small and medium enterprises in Turkey, which are a very important component of the, of the Turkish uh, developmental uh, history, and, and Egypt. So it's a very, really interesting book, and uh, I advise everybody, and I, I, I know that there are a number of, uh, of people from my department uh, attending this because this uh, information has been circulated. So I really advise everybody to, to read this book. And uh, I'm sure that Amr will now present, present it in a way that will entice everyone to, 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 to get the book and read. So Amr, very pleased to, to welcome you and the floor is yours. Well, uh, just a reminder, you. sorry, before we start Please. that uh, questions and all that, if for those who are here for the first time, you, uh, the only way now to, to, because we are to interact with the, with, uh, with us will be through the Q&A uh, uh, device on, on Zoom. I will be uh, uh, monitoring of, uh, and, uh, your questions and reading them, putting them to Amber in the Q&A period that will follow his speech. We'll be speaking for about 45 minutes or so, and the rest of the time until 7 p.m. will be uh, 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 for the Q&A. So Amber, sorry. Not, not at all. Thank you. Thank you very much for this kind invite and for the interest in the in the book. Uh, it's it's really like a pleasure and an honor uh, to uh, like present my uh, my book and to have this book talk at uh, at SOAS. Um, so um, like thanks a lot also for the introduction and for the fact that you uh, uh, like received well the the, the book. Uh, you are definitely one of the uh, interlocutors uh, within the book because the, the, the people uh, want uh, was uh, one of the uh, major contributions, especially in the aftermath of the Arab uh, revolutions that invited rethinking of many of the, uh, well, what we took as uh, tenets for the explanation of uh, like the, the what, what, what came to be seen as a failed market making process in many of the Arab countries that uh, adopted uh, some neoliberal uh, uh, reforms. So uh, uh, Capitalism uh, is a book uh, that I started working on back in, uh, in 2013 when I was spending some time as a postdoc fellow in, uh, in Stanford. It took almost seven years. And uh, it was based uh, to a great extent on uh, some uh, exceptional fieldwork, and it's not. I'm not saying that it's exceptional because of its quality. Uh, I'm saying it's exceptional because uh, the fact that it happened. Uh, the idea that these were like moments when fieldwork could be done to a, to an to an extent in a country like Egypt. Tunisia was also included in the in the earlier uh, uh, study, and uh, this was like a rare uh, window of opportunity that uh, unfortunately closed uh, like altogether. Nowadays, it's almost impossible even to have personal uh, interviews unless you are talking to people that you completely uh, uh, trust and that trust you so that they can exchange any important information with you. And uh, this provided some uh, wealth of uh, empirics about uh, what I call the broader base of the Egyptian private sector uh, without uh, trying to conflate it uh, uh, with uh, the, the, like the, the other subsistence-driven uh, um, establishments, uh, people that are self-employed, etc., as many neoliberal scholars would, would like to, like counting everybody as an entrepreneur. Like this is one of the, of the things that I tried to be uh, like careful uh, uh, not to uh, do. And uh, the, 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 what I tried to do uh, was to uh, take a look uh, at, um, well, other cases uh, in the global south, uh, especially in, the, in, in Asia. And uh, of course, it's, it's a single case study. However, uh, it's based on uh, some very heavy implicit comparison with uh, cases in Southeast Asia, as well as in, uh, in, uh, in East Asia, uh, together, of course, with the reference to countries like uh, uh, Turkey in, uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in, in, like in the Middle East. Um, and uh, the, 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 the question that is raised in the book is primarily, how did we end up here? Like a country like Egypt is a country that uh, started some market reforms uh, early on, like the earliest round with these reforms uh, can be traced back to the Infitah under Sadat in the mid 1970s. Uh, but as of the early 1990s, some consistent yet gradual 
uh, and not very even, uh, but consistent uh, liberalization, deregulation, and privatization uh, took place. Uh, whether this resulted, of course, in the establishment of uh, like a, a, a free uh, market or not uh, is quite debatable. And I think that we already have a thick uh, uh, literature on uh, how the uh, liberalization and privatization drives in many parts of the Middle East and North Africa ended up creating uh, non-market forms of capitalism or uh, what we might call in, you know, like using uh, uh, man's uh, uh, like language, uh, closed order systems to an extent. There is already thick literature with very strong evidence. Um, and uh, this is not exactly what I, I, I was like trying to contradict showing that they were uh, like wrong in getting the facts. But what I was trying to, to, to show here is that um, regardless of how free that market is, because this is quite tricky, uh, assuming that we have, as a matter of fact, free markets, which are co completely competitive, et, et cetera, which is rarely the case anywhere in the, in the world. Uh, or that we have cases where uh, like big business is not intimately tied to uh, the state, which is again, uh, like pretty much of a, uh, like, a, 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 like a chimera really. If, if you take a look at many of the cases that are deemed successful in Southeast Asia or in, in East Asia. Uh, so the, the question really becomes, why did the transformation in uh, Egypt that took place led to a uh, like well, what seemed to be like a failed uh, market uh, order to a great extent one that did not deliver for the majority of the of the people one that did not succeed uh, as a matter of fact and ironically in the very terms that were set by the neoliberal sponsors um, in terms of upgrading uh, the export structure increasing the competitiveness of the egyptian economy uh, generating high growth rates in a sustainable uh, manner, like all, all of these uh, goals were uh, missed to a great uh, uh, extent. And uh, to the right, of course, the, the blame was mainly on either that not enough neoliberal reforms were uh, 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 like adopted. And I tried to show empirically that uh, even using uh, something like the Heritage Fund, which is like quite conservative, the Egyptian economy, as a matter of fact, was relatively liberalized compared to many other cases in the, in the global south. Uh, and we had, uh, by the 1990s, a private sector dominated economy uh, uh, with a very diversified uh, uh, private uh, uh, sector that uh, occupied some significant sectors, uh, some of them tradable, some of them non-tradable. But as a matter of fact, the public sector ceased to be uh, uh, very important uh, in uh, uh, key sectors like the manufacturing or like construction, not to mention agriculture, uh, uh, et cetera, uh, tourism as well. Uh, these became almost completely dominated by the, the private sector. Uh, yet uh, the uh, overall performance uh, proved not to be very impressive, neither economically nor socially, of course, uh, in a way that might uh, indicate to us why the uh, uh, like Egypt was part of the of the Arab uh, uh, revolutions. The idea that uh, uh, like a, a significant majority of the people were uh, like found themselves uh, outside of that uh, uh, order, uh, either through unemployment or underemployment, which is even more of a of a, of a general uh, problem that is linked to rampant uh, informality, like problems of low wages, low productivity, etc. So what I tried to do is to shift the focus somehow away from state policies, state regulations, uh, and state role in shaping uh, the, uh, like the, the, what was, uh, well, like hoped for as a liberal uh, order through these rounds of privatization and liberalization into the Egyptian private sector itself, using some tools of economic sociology. And uh, as a matter of fact, this was uh, uh, like one of the wishes of the late uh, Samir Suleiman, who, who I consider as uh, like my, my, my friend and my mentor, uh, who uh, like unfortunately uh, uh, passed uh, like seven uh, years ago uh, or more, uh, eight years ago, as a matter of fact. And uh, Samer has this uh, very uh, main, like very uh, important contribution to the study of the political economy of Egypt, uh, the, the, the autumn of dictatorship, which appeared in 2011, in, like almost immediately before his, uh, his death. And uh, uh, one, one of like on, on his research agenda was the interest in studying the 
Egyptian pet sector itself, because it has been overlooked to a great extent. And the study uh, of big businesses in Egypt, uh, either as part of studying crony capitalism or uh, rent seeking or uh, uh, clientelism and patronage, etc., uh, passed through uh, studying the role of the state in shaping big businesses or in constraining competition by uh, uh, creating its own uh, cronies or select uh, some businesses, etc. So the shift into studying the vast Egyptian uh, uh, private sector, uh, very barely defined as uh, those who own uh, the, the, their means of productions that happen to be operating on very different scales in very different sectors, uh, requires some uh, shift away from the state without ignoring the state, of course. And that's why the book was really an attempt at bringing three bodies of literature. Uh, one of them is the, is the one on economic sociology that is informed pretty much by the uh, works of people like uh, Karl Polanyi uh, uh, and, uh, of course, Granovetter and the whole literature about embeddedness, about how uh, social relations are related to uh, um, the economy. Uh, the other body is political economy, which is, which is something that we are more familiar with, uh, state institutions, how the state shapes access to uh, um, like mainly capital. This is what I try to focus on. Uh, the rules that have been uh, 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 like either inherited from pre-liberalization uh, uh, times or created throughout the process and that regulated through uh, a set of formal, informal and semi-formal uh, rules, the access of the like bigger base of the private sector to uh, the two forms of capital, financial capital as well as physical capital, with a focus on land. And that's why we have like, a chapter on uh, the banking sector being the most important component of, fi of the financial uh, system in Egypt and access to land, uh, which is, again, something that I tried to pull into uh, the study of mainstream political economy in, in Egypt. And the, the, the main uh, thesis here was that uh, a private sector developed uh, or a private sector uh, driven uh, economy did emerge in, uh, in, in Egypt uh, out of a number of uh, like different uh, factors, uh, uh, the withdrawal of the, of the state, the dismantling of the welfare-like uh, 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 arrangements uh, that were centered around the public sector uh, that were inherited from Nasser and that lingered some time under, uh, under Mubarak. Uh, together with, of course, the uh, like the, the, the demographics of the more people that were trying to uh, uh, like that ended up being pulled into the orbit of the market and a certain population uh, trying to use the rough data from the uh, from CapMass, the, the like the state uh, statistical authority in Egypt since the mid 1980s, uh, a certain percentage of of these were. Um, entrepreneurial in the Weberian sense, in the sense of being bent on producing for market exchange with an aim of uh, uh, um, like uh, accumulating. And one of the important markers here is that these were not uh, self-employed uh, people who are usually much closer to the proletariat because many of them are people that don't have access to the job market and they end up doing some self-employed job uh, that is usually either manual or menial until they find a better job uh, uh, where they are paid. But we have those who are employers, even on a small scale. And I tried to uh, uh, focus in, in the, in the uh, survey, which is more of a qualitative survey that I, I, I had uh, back in 2012, 2013, in order to uh, understand more of these uh, people and to answer the question that was raised by the third body of literature that I tried to engage with, which is that on business and finance, which is quite technical, uh, very much to the right, uh, quite conservative, meaning that it doesn't really raise questions about the basis of, of, of what the economy is, etc. It just like takes the market uh, uh, as a given. But empirically, it's very, very rich. Uh, and conceptually as well, like one of the uh, things that I tried to bring in is the business system, the, the rules uh, that govern a certain uh, area uh, and that regulate to a great extent how these enterprises or how these establishments more generally uh, interact uh, with one another. So this is like business to business uh, interaction. And more importantly, deal with the uh, state inspired or set regulations uh, that uh, uh, determine to a great extent how they access uh, capital. And the point here was not really the lack of entrepreneurialism. Anecdotally, we have many, uh, uh, like it's a very monetized economy to a great extent. And there have been major transformations. The idea that the 
bulk of of of, uh, of Egyptians work uh, uh, for the private sector nowadays, uh, and this has been the case for the past 20 years, more 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 or less. And uh, away, of course, from the uh, like the big uh, share of those who are uh, like were like either pushed into the market or pulled by the market for uh, subsistence or or like the uh, like uh, um, uh, like mainly self sustenance uh, expectations. We do have what what I might call uh, like a, a a hidden entrepreneurial population of people that uh, start small, and the problem is that they remain so. So we have this literature in finance, especially, and which is like very business oriented about the support of SMEs in Egypt. And then you discover statistically that the problem is that we don't actually have SME sector to start with. The problem is not that SMEs don't have access to education or to skills or to capital. The problem is that we have uh, uh, like a, uh, the missing middle syndrome is something that uh, was found in the in the finance finance uh, uh, like studies and that was brought into the study or explaining the Arab world more generally, Egypt included. The idea that you have a very broad base of micro establishments that never grow. The problem is that they start tiny and they remain tiny. They never grow into what we might call based on the very, very different definitions, uh, either turnover or, or labor based into small and medium sized uh, enterprises. And uh, an interesting thing when we contrast uh, not only Egypt, by the way, but the other countries in, the, in North Africa and the Middle East that have gone through uh, some uh, extended uh, uh, market making efforts like Tunisia and uh, Morocco, it's quite striking that you do have a middle missing, like a missing middle uh, to a great extent, really. It's like the idea that you have these micro enterprises and on the top of these, you have uh, very large uh, enterprises that have almost nothing to do with them. You don't have any uh, backward or forward linkages. And in that sense, they are not being, uh, like the, the main sector that creates employment is that of the micro enterprises that happen to be of low wage, low productivity, low technology, because they are extremely undercapitalized. And the, the point is that this makes them very un, um, uh, like not tempting to the bigger uh, uh, businesses to exploit them in the Marxian as well as the neoclassical economic sense, just like to, to make use of them. And hence, this might, might be an explanation for the macroeconomic uh, uh, feature of the inability to develop uh, labor intensive uh, 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 industries and the remaining uh, 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 like reliance on rather uh, either capital intensive uh, uh, and usually very uh, raw material, like it's a factor-based economy at the end of the day, the idea of the inability to diversify away from raw materials, even though a country like Egypt is not rich in raw materials, by the way, that's the, that, that, that is the, the, like the, that's the elephant in the room. Really. So uh, it, it's a country that is not rich in oil, for instance, or natural gas, yet is quite dependent on them in its uh, uh, like uh, mode of insertion into the global economy. So uh, the, the point here is, that uh, I tried to seek institutionalist uh, explanation to a rather structural problem. The idea that you have a private sector uh, that is uh, um, um, like bifurcated to a great extent when it comes to size with a very small uh, presence of small and medium-sized uh, enterprises that had major implications for the inability to develop labor intensive uh, uh, industries uh, and uh, also the establishment of uh, an integrate what I call like an integrated capitalist order, where you have enterprises that uh, uh, like have uh, dense links with each other that form uh, like national uh, value chains or are part of regional and global value chains. This is something that is missing throughout most of the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, the idea that, the, the, that you have very few uh, businesses, usually the ones that are quite concentrated, many of which are politically connected. But what I tried to, to show here is that you actually have some kind of a division of labor between the big businesses, many of which are politically connected, either as like they accumulated capital and then became politically connect, uh, connected or, or vice versa. Uh, and But there is a division of labor, meaning that it's, I, I, like, I, fi I found evidence that it's not that they are necessarily crowding out the, the smaller ones. The, the point is that the, the smaller ones are um, not invited in. And here comes the political, uh, like they are neither capable of, or they could not uh, bring, like uh, they, they, they could not break into 
the system where capital provision uh, 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 like was uh, regulated, uh, nor were they brought in by some of the powerful actors in the different phases uh, of uh, um, like market making reforms in, in Egypt. And this resulted in this institutional condition that I, 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 I called uh, uh, cleft uh, capitalism. Uh, and uh, uh, like the, the main mechanism uh, that uh, I am, uh, like I argued for and tried to provide some empirical evidence uh, in support of on the macro as well as the micro uh, levels is that uh, access to capital for the broad base of the private sector is extremely restrained. It's not by political design. It, I don't think that it was a political decision that was made in order to uh, uh, like um, exclude the, 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 the broad base. Because as a matter of fact, on, on different occasions, you have at least the rhetoric uh, uh, like showing uh, uh, like some interest in the development of an SME uh, sector, uh, even in, a, in like the political logic behind it, uh, as part of the uh, like of of uh, of uh, uh, like a, like a market populism, if you may call it, part of the neoliberal uh, ideal for development that everybody can be integrated on market uh, basis as producers. So you have households that become household uh, enterprises, you have uh, uh, individuals that become self-employed or, or whatever. The problem is that this was not achieved. And um, I uh, like try to, to, to give uh, like through process tracing a rather detailed uh, account of how the banking sector uh, which is like the main channel, uh, uh, collecting sa like savings and channeling uh, investment, how uh, the, the rules, uh, informal as well as formal, uh, like governing it, uh, how they evolved uh, since the 1970s uh, uh, onward, and uh, how uh, different coalitions that were uh, in, like social coalitions that were supporting uh, whoever was uh, uh, ruling Egypt at the time, and of course, like the, the, the bulk of this time was under uh, uh, Mubarak. Uh, the, 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 this coalition was not just centered around the uh, big businesses that uh, are either like uh, cronies or non-cronies, because the, the, there are some, uh, there is some evidence that you had um, uh, like privates of accumulation in a country like Egypt, and they can go through these uh, before. Uh, and this is where I, I spot, and that's a footnote, um, the, the, like the problematic nature of trying to draw too much uh, or, or too many lessons from the post-communist uh, world where there was no formal private sector at all at the moment when communism collapsed and private sector was almost completely created through the transfer of uh, state-owned like, uh, assets into private hands. This was not exactly the case in, uh, in Egypt as well as in many other countries in, uh, in, in the global south. And that's why there have always been uh, uh, private sources of, of accumulation. Uh, and that's why crony capitalism, as, as, as I, 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 I propose in the, uh, this tri trifurcated uh, uh, cleft uh, uh, system from an institutionalist angle, uh, only constituted one, albeit important, uh, uh, business system. And then you had other big businesses that were related to the state in a different uh, uh, manner. Uh, together with the small stratum of uh, those who could make it against the odds into the uh, rank of medium uh, and some small uh, enterprises. Uh, but then you had the, what I call the Belady uh, capitalism, which is like the transliteration of uh, uh, like the broad base of these micro enterprises that despite the fact that many of them were market oriented, they could never politically uh, 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 like influence the rules uh, in a way that could have enabled them to uh, uh, grow uh, out of their micro uh, uh, status and hence become uh, uh, like small and, and, the, and the, the missing medium uh, and small uh, uh, capitalist uh, stratum that uh, existed in many other cases, especially in Asia. And I tried to show that uh, to a great extent here, it's the question is really about the capitalist order and how integrated it is. Countries that have an unintegrated capitalist order are likely to have these uh, institutions uh, that provide capital, not only to the cronies, but more importantly, in, in the case of, uh, of Egypt, at, at, at least, I tried to show that it had to do with sustaining different components of the, uh, uh, like the, 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 the social uh, coalition that was state dependent. The uh, attempt at um, uh, shielding it to a great extent uh, from the uh, state fiscal crisis 
from higher inflation, from uh, that, like the restructuring itself that, that happened, and especially the, the bulk of, uh, of, of employment in the civil service, in the, in the bureaucracy, rather than in, the, in, in, in state-owned enterprises. And uh, how this was uh, quite uh, crucial uh, in making the state one of the biggest uh, borrowers of the banking sector, uh, in a way that, uh, uh, like, most probably unintentionally created very high uh, barriers and the very non-entrepreneurial banking uh, system that made uh, it possible for the uh, only the biggest, most concentrated, and most uh, or best connected uh, big businesses to be able to get uh, uh, capital, uh, financial capital. And uh, the the story with land uh, is. Uh, not very similar mechanisms, but very similar when it comes to the uh, final uh, uh, outcome, because these were uh, uh, clearly cases where uh, uh, the state uh, uh, like uh, dominated uh, much of the space in Egypt, especially the desert that was uh, uh, like uh, um, open, like if Egypt is abundant in anything, it's it's really in space in the desert that can be used for non-agricultural reasons. Uh, yet the land has a very, very interesting story about how regulations created uh, a rather uh, artificial scarcity having to do with, with many uh, components of the state call that changed over time, by the way, but the logic remained, uh, where um, uh, 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 like in investing uh, in this artificial scarcity. Uh, you have big businesses being brought in uh, at a certain uh, moment. But in, in none of these uh, uh, like moments throughout the attempted market making in, in Egypt, did any uh, powerful member of the changing ruling, ruling coalition uh, try to bring in, uh, like the, the mechanism of bringing in representatives of the broad base of the private sector. Uh, this did not uh, happen. And, and in the meantime, they, like the, the, the broader base of the private sector, the, the, like the, those who were operating under validity capitalism, could never wield enough power to break into the system. And here I, co I contrast it to a great extent with how uh, varieties of, of capitalism evolved in uh, uh, China, in Vietnam, in Thailand, in, before that in Taiwan, uh, as well as in Turkey, as, as you mentioned, where uh, uh, it, it, like the, the, the provision of capital is what uh, enables such a thing to happen. So if, if I may wrap up uh, and uh, the, the the, the, like the, the theoretical uh, hoped for uh, contribution um, mainly uh, like uh, revolved around uh, three, three points really. Um, the, the, the first one was to uh, depart to a great extent from the uh, neoclassical institutionalist uh, stance that uh, claims that the distribution of property rights uh, is the prerequisite for the creation of uh, a uh, market. Because the idea that you have institutions that are well-developed uh, is simply something that runs against the historical experience of how capitalism evolved. And uh, uh, works by many economic historians uh, show, uh, in including, by the way, people that fall into the neoclassical institutionalist camp, like uh, Avner Griff, for instance. Uh, they show that uh, you have either functional equivalence or you have other uh, like private order or elements of self-regulation or self-enforcement. And this is what we have been seeing in many of the cases that are deemed successful in, uh, in Asia, where uh, uh, you ironically have institutional qualities that are either equal to those of the Middle East or uh, are inferior actually to, to them, levels of corruption, same goes. So it's the departure from what we might call like the neoclassical, like the, the, the von Hayek, uh, 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 like uh, assertion that the state has to uphold uh, the process of, of market making. Uh, then we, we have the, the, the other uh, thing that I tried to show empirically using the, the survey as well. Uh, what we might call like the Polanian basis for market making in many countries in the global south. The idea that different forms of embeddedness, uh, social uh, embeddedness can make market actors and they can create markets them, the, the, themselves. And this is a process that usually is not happening in the absence of the state. It, 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 it creates this like vast gray area. And I tried to show this in, in, the, in the last two chapters, uh, which have all of the empirics, where uh, how um, uh, informality and formality did not exist as poles, as a matter of fact, but rather as a vast gray area in which most of the uh, uh, small and, and micro enterprises operated in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. 
so uh, this is like a, 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 another theoretical uh, uh, like point to, uh, to to draw, which is what I called uh, market uh, uh, oriented embeddedness, where embeddedness can actually, instead of displacing the market, can help in the uh, creation and the sustaining of the of the market, especially in the absence of uh, formal contract enforcement and uh, strong property rights protection. The 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 third uh, uh, theoretical uh, point is that. The problem might not be really Weberian uh, with the development of uh, uh, like a functioning market system. It's not that you need uh, uh, like a spirit of, of capitalism or the logic of market making. It's like this, this does this. Uh, and uh, like we don't need to go back into the reinvention of, uh, of, of, uh, of, the, of the, like the Protestant ethic uh, really. Uh, in order for this to happen again, it already happened and, and, and it found its way in by virtue of the integration of many of these parts into uh, global uh, or into European capitalism 200 years, like starting 200 years ago. Uh, at the same time, the problem might be uh, very much Marxian about how uh, market making requires uh, making uh, first market actors and this market like market actors can emerge through uh, elements of uh, what might what might be called the primitive accumulation. It's like the political mechanisms that allow the capitalization of actors. And the problem is that the capitalization, which is politically driven and has been so in many uh, cases in the global south, including the ones that succeeded, uh, uh, the problem is that it was so narrowly based in 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 in, in the context uh, of, uh, of, uh, of 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 Egypt, uh, and this had economic as well as political uh, repercussions. Economically, it created this order of cleft capitalism, the, the, the missing middle on the, one, on, the, on the one hand, and politically, it uh, um, like militated against the creation of uh, political uh, and social constituencies that could have lent support to uh, uh, market uh, making. This is one of the reasons why we can bring in much of the literature that uh, uh, was written. Uh, your book included the one, or the first one, on, on like the, the, the old one on the, on, on the people want, as well as the neo Gramscian literature on the fusion of the uh, legitimacy and domination of uh, post independence uh, states uh, uh, amid the uh, attempt at the creation of a market uh, order. So uh, I, I'll stop here. Uh, like, uh, hopefully, the presentation was. Uh, well, comprehensive uh, somehow. Uh, I uh, well, the, the book has a lot of, of, of details. I cannot uh, like be just in in presenting all of these, but uh, like hopefully I, I, I can leave some uh, time for the uh, Q and A. So thanks. Uh, here, here you go, Jordan. Yes. Uh, well, thank you very much, Amr. Uh, well, actually, you left uh, uh, maybe more time than, than expected, or you took less time than expected, but that's because your expose was so dense that I should have uh, said to the audience, fasten uh, seat belts uh, before we, we, we start. <laughs> it was at such a rhythm. Uh, uh, well, I hope uh, the, 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 our, the, the participants that uh, were able to, to follow you, it wasn't easy to follow you, I, I, I must say, even for someone like me who has read the book, so I may imagine that uh, for others, uh, it might have been uh, more, 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 more difficult. Uh, that was a very dense uh, uh, presentation and at a very high speed. So that, that yeah. So, um, so uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I just like got, uh, I, I got carried away with. No, no. I mean, that was great to see your, uh, you know, I mean, it's obviously a, a topic that you, you you control very well, you you grasp very well, and uh, and uh, it's uh, yeah. But uh, I just uh, said that uh, well, uh, maybe if if you had spoken more slowly, people would have had uh, would have have it easier to 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 follow what you you were saying because you said such a number of important things, and uh, all this in in. Quite, I mean, almost less than uh, 30 minutes. So, yeah, fantastic. Anyway, um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll shift to the to see what what questions we we have, um, and uh, I will also put some questions uh, to to you. But the questions are starting to come, which is great. Um, uh, let me start with a colleague of mine from the department, uh, uh, Subir Sina, who is a 
who is telling you, uh, maybe you can read it at the same time, great talk, uh, thanks. Um, uh, so we are in the same issue of Geo Forum. So, um, which, uh, okay. And uh, the question he is putting is what social groups in other comparative cases are the basis for the missing middle? And does this group exist in Egypt? Does it have political power in Egypt? Please elaborate. Yeah, so that shows you also that, uh, yeah, you, you need, uh, you needed to clarify a few things. So that's the, the Q&A is, is here for that. So please, you, maybe you start. I will take them one by one. Okay, sure. Uh, if, you, so, if that's uh, okay with uh, you. Th thanks, thanks, Sabir. I, I, yeah, I, I do remember definitely that we worked together on the on the special uh, on the special issue. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I tried to uh, uh, show uh, that uh, th there were uh, like the, the criterion that I tried to use very much was uh, micro and small enterprises that uh, employed uh, uh, workers, especially workers uh, uh, that were not uh, uh, like part of the same uh, family and hence were related on wage uh, basis. And I took this as a very rough uh, proxy to uh, uh, like this private sector not being uh, exactly within the realm of uh, uh, the uh, firms that are driven by, uh, not firms, by like the establishments or the people that are usually self-employed, they are quite informal uh, and that uh, provide services and, and hence they are much closer to being uh, self-employed rather than being uh, employers. So um, the, 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 like the, the point that I tried to uh, show uh, here was uh, the groups within the broader population of micro establishments in 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 Egypt uh, that are around two, two, two or three million uh, establishments, according to the estimations of uh, of, of of Capmas, and that uh, had shown um, well like signs of uh, uh, their ability to uh, uh, grow uh, in case uh, they had access to uh, capital. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think that. Uh, there were some attempts, uh, of course, under the, the very brief uh, brotherhood uh, uh, like rule in, in Egypt, uh, they uh, appear to have uh, uh, been um, uh, like interested in uh, mimicking or emulating the experience in, uh, in, uh, in, in Turkey. Uh, but also before that, by the way, like under uh, the the market making attempt under uh, like uh, like the, the team uh, that was affiliated with Gamal Mubarak, uh, they they seem to have uh, like targeted some of these. The problem is that the attempts at capitalization were non mainstream, uh, and uh, um, hence they, they were never on on a scale uh, that was uh, like uh, enough or or adequate for the creation of uh, this uh, middle. So. I, I do think that um, we do have a very broad private sector, uh, unlike other cases in the in the region uh, where uh, there is no there isn't a long tradition of a of like an, uh, an uh, what we might call like an indigenous or an autochthonous uh, private sector. We do have uh, this private uh, uh, sector, and uh, some of these uh, enterprises, in case of or establishments, in case of uh, of, of, of they they had access to. Uh, uh, physical as well as financial uh, uh, capital, uh, they they might develop into uh, this, this myth that is missing somehow. So I, I hope that this is like uh, uh, what you uh, uh, like what you had in mind. Uh, <clears throat> okay, thank you. And uh, well, there are just three questions for now. So I I'm taking first the, the question which are more directly related to, to your presentation. There is a one question which is uh, uh, on uh, on a political issue, uh, which we'll take uh, later on. Um, uh, there is a question by uh, Noor El Nayal, who is saying you've been talking about restricted capital raise in Egypt. But in the stock market, you can now raise capital through an IPO with a company capital starting 100K EGP. So how do you think is that restricting uh, capital raise? So, uh, so th thanks, thanks, Noor, for the question. Uh, the, the issue, of course, is that the stock market, not just in Egypt, but more generally, 
uh, is the place where you have, uh, like by definition, big, big capital that is big enough in order to become bigger. Uh, when you have an IPO, uh, we, we so the the you have uh, like to start with. Of course, uh, Egypt is a bank-based financial system until now. The stock market has not become that central, despite the fact that it has been around for uh, like rather a, a, a long uh, time. Uh, its its capitalization, its uh, overall uh, share is is quite limited to some of the biggest uh, uh, companies. And at the same time, the attempt at uh, using uh, uh, the stock market in order to provide uh, capital to uh, some small and mid medium-sized uh, enterprises, uh, like with the with the Nile stock market, uh, it's like it did not prove really to be very successful until now. It's 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 actually like a, a like a, a case of very very limited success, if not of of, of complete failure. So the the integration uh, has to happen through the banking sector. And uh, much of the attempts at, include, at, at extending capital to uh, the broad base of the private sector has been happening through non-mainstreaming. And I tried to uh, uh, show here that you have these uh, either associations or capital uh, uh, companies uh, uh, that uh, are, uh, well, like they, they are doing this because they are not part of the banking sector in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, where the banking sector is not expected to deal with uh, micro enterprises because uh, they are not, uh, it's not worth it. It's, it's like it's too costly and at the same time, uh, 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 like too risky when it comes to uh, dealing with the, so many units uh, that are, like ha happen to work uh, usually uh, informally with a substantial uh, percentage of their work uh, being in uh, informal uh, and uh, hence the, the main issue uh, uh, like will depend uh, on uh, the creation of what I called in the book intermediate uh, institutions uh, ones that can um, enable the creation of complementarities between uh, the social capital of many of these uh, enterprises and entrepreneurs on the one hand and the uh, kind of financial capital that can be uh, extended on impersonal basis and hence become uh, available to uh, many and uh, this has not been uh, uh, like this has, has not been achieved under uh, the past or during the past two decades uh, under the different forms that we have where we have uh, business associations uh, uh, extending uh, uh, credit uh, or something like the uh, social fund uh, for development. It, it requires some mainstreaming through uh, like the reconfiguration of uh, banking. But this is something that is not likely to happen uh, out of uh, uh, like some technical or administrative uh, reform. It's, it, it's something that is clearly uh, uh, distributional and hence has to happen in a political context um, where uh, like the, the, there is room for the capitalization of uh, of, 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 the, of, of many of the uh, micro actors in, uh, in, in the market. Thank you, uh, Amr. Um, uh, now a question by uh, uh, someone who has read your book, so who has, uh, I presume, been able to, to follow you and, uh, and get to, to the, the, the core of what you, you are saying, is uh, Bryony Wolf, who's uh, working on a uh, PhD thesis on, again, the, the comparison between Egypt and Turkey, which you, you worked on in your previous book. So, Brioni says, thank you. It seems that the development of the uh, small-scale enterprises was both a problem of their inability to politically raise their case, but also that the political elite didn't promote their interests. Is it the case that the political powers could not reach the SSE sector due to the administrative system uh, uh, or that they were not interested? As it seems that there were projects and attempts to integrate them like EU projects, also land laws that gave SSE priority in Egypt. And uh, well, there is a second question, but let's start with the, the first one. Sure. So, uh, um, so thanks a lot. This is uh, like it, this question is is very very relevant to understanding the the, the situation in uh, in in Egypt and the condition of of cleft capitalism. Um, I think that uh, these many of the of the rules that controlled or regulated either formally or informally the access to uh, capital were set originally to allow. 
the uh, top executive leadership uh, access to much of this capital, either in the form of the desert land that is state controlled or in the form of uh, uh, bank, uh, uh, bank credit. And uh, this uh, like, had to do with the earlier strategies that were adopted to stabilize the uh, regime. Uh, and you need to, of course, bear in mind that the, the like early uh, uh, openings under Sadat and then later on under Mubarak were driven to a great extent by the uh, designs of the of the of the regime to uh, uh, well, like shield its constituencies uh, as much as possible, uh, at least not to uh, like have uh, uh, like what what Samir Suleiman once called at least to have passive uh, opposition. Uh, instead of like looking for uh, active uh, uh, support. Uh, and the, the, the point here is that uh, this um, created uh, conditions uh, where uh, like the, 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 they never had the, um, the resources to a great extent in order to bring these uh, people in. And the problem with the broad base of the private sector is that they were not part of the uh, corporatization efforts that happened under uh, Nasser to a great extent. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why uh, they uh, were not uh, enabled, unlike many other uh, uh, actors, to uh, collectively organize and to be politically uh, uh, like relevant. Uh, and here it, it's important that the, the, the element of the institutional uh, uh, heritage uh, that uh, marked how the state and society or state and economy were, uh, were related here matters to to a great extent. The uh, projects that were uh, um, like supported by the USAID as well as by the EU, uh, especially during the the last decade under Mubarak, uh, show that the like some of the uh, economic the top economic team that was drawn heavily from the ranks of the uh, uh, big business uh, uh, class, they uh, could see the merits in um, establishing. Uh, or in addressing the problem of the missing middle. Uh, that's clear. And that's why it's not about the intention. It's not about the fact that they, they missed this uh, uh, issue. It's rather about the, uh, like uh, how the, the direct political uh, uh, like uh, project to an, to an extent um, aligned itself or not with the attempt at bringing these people in. So what happened is that the non-mainstreaming uh, in the end, which was pretty much sponsored and financed by uh, foreign uh, uh, donors, uh, wasn't uh, like was was quite a representation of the inability as well as the unwillingness to uh, change the uh, rules according to which capitalization of uh, 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 of enterprises uh, happened in in Egypt, resulting in the uh, exclusion uh, of the uh, uh, small uh, uh, like uh, uh, like small establishments. Uh, from the uh, like the the, the capital uh, pro providing uh, uh, arrangements in in Egypt. Thank you. Um, just for everyone, if if uh, I mean you, you can come back with uh, further questions if you need further clarification of any on any of the questions that you have put. So, uh, Brioni's second question, which is also related to one which is uh, by uh, Marketa El Sheikh, is uh, about the military, which is, of course, uh, uh, here you can say the elephant in the room when it comes to, yeah. to the Egyptian economy. So, uh, Brioni asked, what impact did the military economic holding have on the SSE sector? Did it crowd Crowd it out, and it's a very interesting question. And uh, Market Sheikh asked uh, similarly: Could you explain the role of army in private sector and the relationship with small and medium enterprises in Egypt? So the the uh, like the the problem is that uh, you definitely have uh, the 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 capitalist. Uh, arrangement in Egypt being reconfigured uh, after 2013, especially uh, like as, as, as of 2015 and 2016, with the uh, military becoming uh, quite central uh, in, the, in the economy. Uh, I wouldn't say that the military dominates the, the economy as such. There is a very big debate, of course, we, we have no idea about like how big it is, especially when it comes to uh, the informal 
like military economy, which is made up of these networks of retired generals, etc. And that is part, nevertheless, of the um, like the privileges that are uh, uh, given to the different members, even though this finds an, an informal expression. But also the, the formal uh, empire itself, like the work uh, that uh, people like Zainab al Magda, as well as Yazid Sayer, have worked on extensively and tried to map uh, uh, empirically. Uh, however, uh, this reconfiguration, again, is it's, it's a marker of how the coalition dominating in, or the dominant coalition has changed over time, uh, yet recreated the very same dynamics where the state keeps uh, uh, the access to, the, like its direct access to capital uh, as a priority, rather than the uh, enabling of the broader base of the private sector to have uh, access to capital. So what happened here, of course, is that the big businesses were uh, reduced to an extent as uh, junior uh, partners, um, you have um, uh, the, the uh, as I was saying, like the, the, the military displacing partly the civilian uh, bureaucracy, uh, as well as uh, the public, uh, many public sector uh, enterprises, by the way, because they, they were the ones that were really crowded out uh, uh, through the uh, like pro procurement and tender uh, rules. But uh, we, we are left with the same issue here is that we have different components of the uh, big business uh, uh, sector uh, at the very top. Um, and uh, not much is uh, or has been done in order to enable uh, the creation of uh, uh, like a small and medium uh, sized uh, uh, inter, uh, enterprise sector. Uh, of course, uh, like again, it's not that they uh, intentionally uh, discarded this as not important or that they moved against this. For instance, you had an unprecedented initiative uh, uh, that uh, uh, the central bank launched uh, as of 2015 and that lasted for three years uh, that had the aim of diversifying the portfolio of Egyptian uh, banks uh, into having um, uh, like 20% of its uh, loans extended to small and medium-sized enterprises. And uh, like the, the study of this is, is quite interesting because uh, of course, we, we don't have much uh, uh, like public information uh, available, but uh, it's it's one of these problems here that uh, the issue is not really with financing SMEs. It's about the creation of uh, as an SME sector that is large enough so that it, it, it can then, uh, like we can address its problems with accessing capital uh, technology, etc. So this is one issue is that the, the, the main priority should be uh, how to capitalize micro enterprises, uh, uh, enabling some of them to become small and medium uh, sized rather than to address the small population of small and medium sized enterprises that you have. But more importantly is that uh, it's, it's again like uh, the, the, the initiative has not been that successful even though many of the boxes were ticked officially uh, because it's either that uh, big businesses established uh, these uh, empty boxes uh, of uh, uh, small enterprises so that they can access subsidized credit uh, and then channel it back to, to the big ones, uh, or as like a back, back channel, it's like a sort of tunneling to an extent, uh, or uh, uh, the issue with the, the not having enough uh, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises in, uh, the, uh, like in, in sectors like uh, the manufacturing. Uh, most of them are in undercapitalized sectors like trade or like services that were not only labor, not labor intensive, but also quite import intensive, by the way. Uh, and uh, this itself proved to uh, go against the, 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 the other uh, uh, goals, especially following the devaluation of suppressing import so that the balance of payment can uh, uh, like uh, get better. So uh, um, I, I think that this was an, uh, like, again, like a, a case in point of trying to um, like address uh, the thing that um, we know best, uh, regardless as, as like the, the, the bureaucracy, uh, as well as the donors and the sponsors, etc. Like without taking a look at the things that we need to do that would require some institution building, um, and again that like cannot be dealt with as a technical or administrative issue. Thank you, Amr. Um, let me take. The, 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 the uh, last questions we have from uh, Sayant and Ray, uh, 
there was a, a previous question, but I leave it also to to to, to after the the this one, the new one, which uh, which is did the Arab Revolution uh, in our contemporary time enable certain sections of Egyptian economy, and if so, what role did the West play in that revival? Uh, I think that this is a very important question and it is related to the point that we were just discussing about the reconfiguration of uh, economic uh, uh, relations. Uh, and uh, it, it definitely, uh, like the, the, it, it enabled uh, like certain non-tradable sectors, especially like construction and real estate, together with a long queue of feeding industries, uh, like bricks, uh, cement, uh, glass, uh, uh, et, et cetera. And um, this is again like awfully familiar earlier rounds where the Egyptian economy was uh, growing uh, with a strong speculative uh, element having to do with uh, land on which these real estate uh, units are, uh, are established. And uh, the problem, of course, is that even though this does create uh, growth and uh, some, um, well, like low wage and usually uh, uh, like precarious employment, yet uh, it, it, uh, it, it's very problematic when it comes to addressing the long-term problems that the Egyptian economy has come to suffer from, especially the ability to generate badly needed dollars, either by investing in sectors that can promote exports or investing in sectors that can limit imports for a country where imports are or have been double uh, its exports. And here comes the problem is that these non-tradables that do not contribute to the bettering of the balance of, uh, of, of payment are uh, like, they, they prove to be quite problematic because they consume the little savings, uh, 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 local savings or domestic savings that are uh, uh, available. They channel them into assets that uh, do not uh, become, like they're, they are dead assets to a great extent. They are not capital by any, by any means. And uh, like the rounds in which the Egyptian economy has been uh, has has seen in the 70s and then in the 90s have been driven by the construction sector. Of course, not on the scale that we are witnessing nowadays. And of course, this is uh, something that uh, is not only on the macro level; it also has to do with the uh, remaking of the of the regime, because this is one of the elements where the military has become very central. Uh, like, uh, 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 like the, the military occupies through in many, many different guises, uh, very central positions in the uh, infrastructure and construction boom that is uh, that is uh, or that has been going on. So uh, I I think that uh, uh, like uh, it's like a, a, a like the the same story to a great extent, but with different protagonists somehow. Uh, but it's it's the same thing. Uh, and most probably we'll end up with the same situation where we have a liquidity issue because so much uh, 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 money was channeled into uh, either assets that are very unproductive or into product into projects that uh, uh, like create returns in the very long term or do not create returns at all, uh, as well as not addressing the Achilles heel of the Egyptian economy, uh, which is uh, the, the like the the, the, the current uh, account uh, and the like the, the ability to generate uh, dollars without depending on um, volatile uh, sources like tourism uh, or purely rentier ones like uh, workers' remittances. That again depends on international oil prices, etc. Um, and what role did the West play in that uh, revival? Uh, I'm not sure about this because uh, again, like what happened after 2011, which is not covered by the by the book, it's it's quite interesting because it marks a shift uh, from um, the 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 like the the more um, dependence on the West as the source of uh, uh, money as the main trade partner, especially the EU, even more than the than the US, even though the US is quite important given the the geopolitical context. But uh, and and the rising role of the uh, of the of the GCC of the Gulf countries uh, that uh, created a regional political economy depending on the secondary redistribution of uh, of oil rents uh, somehow uh, and uh, this is very very interesting it's a story to tell and I think that uh, Adam Haney has touched extensively on uh, on on this in his most recent uh, work uh, so it's it's a it's a very interesting thing because there is a shift. Uh, that uh, we have been living uh, through in the past decade. 
Thank you, uh, <clears throat> uh, Amr. Um, a question from uh, Safa Judy, who is uh, also preparing a PhD and working on the Egyptian-Chinese uh, Suez uh, cooperation zone. Uh, so Safa is asking, uh, given increased role of and openness to transnational capital in the current context, do you see opportunities for integration of the domestic sector? And is embeddedness with its exaggerated emphasis on the domestic level and neglect of extra local link, uh, is it a relevant lens for scholarly work in the present context? So uh, thanks a lot, Safa, for this uh, for like these two questions. Uh, let me start with the, with the first. Is that uh, I'm not sure that um, uh, well, if if we mean by transnational capital foreign direct investment, especially that you, you like like Professor Ashkar was saying that you worked on the on the like Chinese investments in uh, in in the Suez Canal zone. Um, actually, uh, Egypt has been underperforming on the front of foreign direct investment compared to pre 2011 times and especially uh, under the like the uh, like the last decade under mubarak when there was uh, a, a great increase in the ratio of of, of foreign direct investment net inflows uh, to uh, gdp uh, as well as to total investment and uh, this gets us into uh, like a situation where the almost two thirds if not more then, uh, if not more, uh, of the foreign direct uh, investment net inflows have gone to the traditional sectors, especially extractive industries uh, like natural gas and oil. And these are, by definition, very capital intensive, uh, very technology intensive. And by definition, they don't have really uh, uh, much to do with the rest of the economy. This is like, uh, these are enclave, uh, sec like en enclave sectors to a great extent. And uh, hence, uh, overall, I think that Egypt has been uh, undergoing um, a redefinition uh, of its uh, mode of insertion into the global uh, financial markets from um, dependent on foreign direct investment uh, rather than foreign debt under under the last uh, like decade, couple of decades under Mubarak to the reverse, where you have less foreign direct investment especially in, in less in, in non-oil uh, uh, and non-gas uh, sectors and, and mainly tourism uh, and the manufacturing and agriculture and uh, an accelerated increase in uh, foreign uh, borrowing that by the way depends on transnational capital because there has been an increasing diversification away from uh, bilateral uh, and uh, uh, like uh, uh, multilateral uh, debt uh, into uh, uh, debt that is uh, uh, extended by um, uh, private equity uh, uh, funds. Uh, and, 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 and this is a different kind of, of exposure. It's a different kind of investment, of course, from the point of view of the creditor. Uh, but for, 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 for the government, of course, it's debt. So um, I, I think that there has been this like redefinition of the mode of, uh, of insertion, uh, which is something that, again, like tells us that we, we, we need to be quite... Uh, 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 careful when we look at the rhetoric or even the the, the goals or the strategies and how these things uh, work out on the on the on like or unfold on the ground uh, your other uh, question about embeddedness I'm, I'm not sure that embeddedness has to be domestic by the way uh, not at all because uh, you have some interesting uh, literature on transnational uh, networks of of suppliers uh, that uh, is by definition transnational the literature on the Chinese or Indian diasporas uh, and how these modes of, of embeddedness enabled the uh, transfer of capital, of skills, uh, as well as the movement of uh, people, of goods. So I, I think that embeddedness, uh, again, like is, is an approach um, that is uh, like inherently, of course, uh, based on, 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 on economic sociology. Uh, and uh, I, I think that it, 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 uh, like it was brought in in a context where globalization was working uh, uh, much better than it is nowadays. So it's not necessarily domestic. Of course, the, the study of Egypt uh, makes it domestic because the, the vast majority of the producers in, in Egypt uh, are not part of global or regional value chains. So the question becomes uh, like having to do with the very nature of the case, questions of the like national uh, uh, integration. 
Thank you. Um, and well, we we have one final question in, in those that are on the Q and A. Oh no, there is uh, again a new one too. So that's great. Um, from Yusra Hussein, thanks a lot for such an illuminating presentation. It was very helpful. I want to ask a question that is taking us, us a step back here. I want to ask Professor Hammer on the audience he is targeting for his book, for this book, if anything beyond academic circles, but also how he reads, situates this book within the larger political economy literature that is becoming much more read. Uh, I see this in the translation in the region, perhaps reflecting on the methodologically specifically. So general questions and yes, uh, Yusra wants to hear your remarks about this. Well, uh, the, 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 like the part of the, of the, like the time that was taken in order to make the, the book uh, appear in, in, in its current uh, form was the push by the Stanford uh, uh, editor. Uh, to try to target people that might be interested in the general question of development uh, or the political economy of the Middle East and, and Egypt, rather than uh, necessarily academics. Uh, so uh, this is like a, a policy that uh, I came to appreciate later on, even though it, it required some uh, considerable work. The, the book is, is, remains very, very academic, but uh, like it, it, it's, it's written in a way that... Uh, like hopefully was less uh, dense and less uh, complicated than my presentation sounded. Uh, so it's uh, like mainly because I get, I get. Uh, well, I it, tend to... it is, it is very readable. The, the, the book okay. is very readable. Yes, yes. So that's, so that's thanks to them, not thanks to me, because most probably <laughs> I write, uh, yeah, like most probably this is where they appear. I, 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 I write the, like the way I, 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 I speak. Uh, and, and not to mention that like, like English is not my mother tongue, which even like adds more uh, more complex to the issue. So uh, the, the audience is definitely hoped to be uh, uh, like, uh, well, like beyond uh, uh, academia, especially that the, the, the immediate context uh, following the 2011 uh, revolutions, and that, that was renewed somehow before the, the, the COVID uh, crisis, did draw some interest. Uh, in uh, the questions of development and political economy beyond the uh, like the jargony uh, uh, academic uh, debate. However, however, there's a very big however here because I had the intention from the very beginning of not translating the book into Arabic as I did with my first uh, book, but rather to rewrite it in, uh, in Arabic because a, a book on, on Egypt, it doesn't make sense for it not to appear in, uh, in, in Arabic. But unfortunately, uh, given the not very happy uh, academic uh, conditions in which uh, we have been living in, uh, in, in Egypt, I don't think it would be a very good idea uh, to uh, get it uh, written in Arabic, not because it would be uh, like deemed too risky, but the thing is that most probably nobody would, would, would publish it as it is. Um, so, um, and this is a situation that is quite new, by the way, because uh, like I've, I've always lived in, in Egypt most of my life. And um, the thing is that uh, like we always thought that uh, uh, books that were like looked academic or sounded academic were spared. Uh, but even nowadays that you have everything circulating on the net, uh, by the way, uh, even that uh, like publishing uh, houses have suffered a severe uh, like uh, crackdown. And uh, this is one of the reasons why um, I, um, well, like I, I think that the, the plan is only uh, uh, like postponed. Uh, I, I do wish to, to, to rewrite it in, uh, in, in Arabic and in a way that uh, would be uh, like much more journalistic based on acad academia. But I, I would like to try to write it in a way that would appeal to uh, the, the, the audience in Egypt uh, that, um, well, like we do have some hundreds of thousands of people that became interested in public policy issues, uh, uh, especially after 2011. And, and, and we still have these people around uh, and they are interested in, in reading this. So hopefully this can be done at a certain moment. Yeah, the, well, I very much hope uh, that you, you will do so. I mean, actually I was going to ask you about the Arabic translation and uh, you answered that question by answering uh, Yusra Hussein's uh, uh, 
uh, remarks. Um, um, but what do you mean that you, you can't publish it? Because uh, I've seen books coming out in Egypt, which are well, very critical, to say the least, of, uh, of Egyptian uh, capitalism and the rest, and the state. Well, in the, in, the, in the past couple of years, uh, publishers have become um, uh, subject to uh, greater censorship. So we got to write some uh, things. I got to contribute with some chapters. And uh, we were told, uh, like, uh, bluntly, that there were some keywords that they looked for and that we should take out. So we tended either to self-censor. Uh, or to uh, like say the same thing, but indirectly, so that these keywords would not appear. Um, but then uh, it's like, the, the point is that th there is a rising problem now. Like I've, 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 I wrote uh, a very, uh, what I would say like a very basic uh, uh, book uh, uh, like that recently came out with, uh, with Columbia University Press uh, with, Nathan, uh, with, with Nathan Brown. And uh, he was very much interested in getting money to translate it, etc. And we, we couldn't find someone in, in, we only had a handful of people that might translate something of the sort or publish it. And they were telling us that it won't. Uh, and like to start, by the way, like just like an anecdote, uh, uh, like Columbia University Press sent me the five copies and uh, they were uh, withheld uh, at the customs uh, office. And then they sent me an email, like they sent me a letter uh, uh, saying that I have to go attend in person before a committee where I, I, I need to tell them why I'm, I, I, I'm getting this book into Egypt. Oh my God. And by the way, the, the book is a background book. Like it's, it's almost a textbook about Egyptian state, society and economy. Like there's nothing like, and that's the point is that they, they flag the name. And of course I never went there. And then, like, I asked them to, like, to 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 send to, like, well, Nathan was was kind enough to get them in his suitcase, uh, to get to get me uh, another five wow. uh, copies, and they still have the five copies in the customs. Uh, but that's the point: is that they told me that the Rakaba al Musannafat is the one that is asking me to present. That's amazing. So it's yeah. it's very much a 1950s thing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They they have tightened it a lot, you know, because uh, I was. Uh, very, well, I wasn't the only one <laughs> extremely astonished to see my book, uh, Morbid Symptoms, in Arabic, with the kind of cover it has being circulated in Egypt. <laughs> that every, no, nobody understood. <laughs> so maybe the censor hasn't read it or something, probably. No, it's, it's, quite, it, it, it's quite uneven, by the way. Huh? It's very unsystematic, quite erratic. So sometimes it's like you are lucky, sometimes you are not. So it's just like this way. Uh, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, yes, probably you're absolutely right on this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we 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 have a few minutes for a final question, which was the first one, but which was a little bit uh, out of uh, the focus. Um, let me reformulate it. It's uh, I mean, how would you uh, locate uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, within? this uh, economic structure that you uh, uh, describe? Well, um, I think that the, the, the crackdown that started on the, on the economy of the Islamist affiliated businesses, not just the, the MB, as well as the, the, their presence in uh, non-governmental organizations, charity, et cetera, um, might be um, a very, um, like, um, interesting moment for us to understand how uh, the uh, Islamists uh, became part of the uh, market-making efforts in Egypt since the 1970s. And we have some very interesting stuff that is written, but much of it because of the like very discreet nature, given, of course, the, the usually authoritarian uh, context. Um, it, it, it conceals much of uh, the dynamics of how these different uh, groups, despite uh, state ambivalence to a great uh, extent and, and sometimes hostility, could uh, uh, yet uh, make their way in. In a way that uh, is, is interesting that um, it, it works to a great extent against the, 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 the assumed logic of crony capitalism, where all, uh, like the, the basic assumption here is that you need to have the state as the source of capital of the 
uh, big businesses or um, so you have many of these businesses that made their way uh, usually in uh, not very capital intensive sectors so that they are not expropriated uh, in a very transnationalized uh, manner uh, capitalizing on the fact that you have a transnational islamist movement uh, uh, as, as 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 some of the, as as like usually um, um, the case with uh, like big uh, uh, ideological uh, like driven uh, movements so it's it's an interesting story that uh, we might uh, get to tell now about like what happened uh, uh, before where uh, like these sectors where these people were overrepresented the areas in which they could uh, uh, expand uh, also uh, the like how related uh, these activities were to the uh, ideological uh, um, uh, like um, um, content uh, of the uh, uh, of the of the movement, uh, the convictions that like was it all in the religious sector? Was it all about commercializing uh, uh, religious uh, practices uh, or uh, giving a religious character to otherwise uh, commercial uh, services or or goods? Or th there were other uh, areas in which they just uh, uh, like uh, uh, operated. So uh, I'm I'm currently working on on this using some of the. Uh, uh, like material that uh, that that we have, uh, which is well mainly mainly from state sources, but that we need to get with uh, with a grain of uh, of salt. But unfortunately, this is the only uh, uh, this is the only source that we that that we uh, that that we have. But they were definitely part. And uh, you, you like the recent book by uh, Angela Joya uh, uh, is one uh, where she dedicates a, a chapter. Uh, on um, like the Islamist capital, uh, uh, especially the uh, like the, the what's what seemed to be an overrepresentation uh, of uh, businessmen uh, within the leadership of the of the of the Brotherhood that what that definitely informed their ideological stance uh, on uh, the market as well as on the state. So there is a story there to tell, by the way. And what I see as most interesting is that it it again it tells us about the importance of embeddedness. Uh, uh, like where, the, like how uh, these uh, business uh, affiliated uh, or uh, sorry, Islamist affiliated uh, uh, businessmen could make it uh, using uh, mechanisms that were not directly related to the state, uh, if, if not even adversely related to the state. Okay, thank you very much, Amr. I, I mean, we had uh, quite enough questions to, to fill, uh, fill the time even though you gave us uh, even more time. So that was actually useful in that regard. Uh, I, I would have uh, liked to, to put a few questions to you myself, but uh, I'll do that in a, in a separate forum and maybe in different ways also. Maybe uh, we should get into some written uh, discussion, a uh, kind of forum maybe around a symposium around your book and on the Egyptian uh, economy scene through your book. That would be, I think, a very useful thing. So we'll. We'll, we'll have further discussions, you and me, about, uh, about this. Definitely. And, uh, I look forward to it. Yes. So thank you very much indeed for, uh, for, this, uh, for giving us this time and this uh, very dense and very useful, interesting uh, presentation. It has been recorded. It will definitely be watched. Uh, I will myself be using it uh, or recommending it to uh, my students in my uh, module on the development in uh, uh, in MENA, in the Middle East and North Africa. So that will be an uh, important, interesting uh, input uh, within that, uh, that framework. So thank you again very much, Amr, and uh, very best wishes and a good evening to all participants. And many thanks to Aki, who has been monitoring us on the technical level. Uh, uh, so all the best. Thank you very much.